What's going on ladies and gentlemen, Manny here, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing fine. We're grinding it out, baby. Welcome back to another home wall session. Outdoor conditions have not been so great recently and that means the, uh, you know, frequency of home wall sessions goes up again. And I thought I'm gonna use the opportunity to answer another uh, frequently asked question, which is the one, Manny. How do you structure your freaking home wall sessions? What are you doing, man? Uh, what's your resting time? What's your pacing? Difficulty of the problems? How many attempts? Yada, yada, yada. So I'm gonna try to be as, as transparent with everything as usual as possible. Uh, you know, starting with the mobilizing routine as uh, usual. Then, of course, the fingers. Mobilizing, very important if you're doing whole body workouts because I feel that, you know, if you get a little bit of stretching into your hips, into your legs especially, increases your stepping accuracy and also your stepping speed um, so especially when you're actual when doing actual climbing mobilizing really pays off but also in hangboarding you know mobilizing the shoulders and the elbows can be useful and hangboarding exclusively obviously you don't need to warm up your your hips or any of that particularly because you're not really using it right after that i'm doing my finger warm-up at least i'm starting to doing that which is uh, hanging a couple of times on the 15 mil of the beast maker 2000 and then switching to the 10 millimeter micros for the four fingers uh, half crimp and for the three fingers open grip i'm gonna use my two centimeter radius edges until i feel okay you know what uh, these fingers are getting juiced up baby so then I'm switching onto the uh, actual wall and do a couple of hangs there as well. Usually these hangs feel a little bit harder than on the Beastmaker and on the Micros, uh, which makes sense, right? If you want to do hard moves on this wall and I have my feet avail available as well, I gotta have these holds bad, right? So um, yeah, these holds hanging, just hanging them without feet is actually quite hard. And uh, this really gets my fingers on into this, you know, into the mode, so to say, into the adaptation for these small crappy holes on the home wall um so yeah as you can see i mean the slow burst some pinches side pulls uh, edges really getting the uh, fingers going and once i feel okay you know what it's time to incorporate the whole body i'm doing the first easier problems yeah? this is the last part of my home wall or warm-up so to speak and this is particularly important to me i have the feeling because i uh, boulder without climbing shoes as you might have noticed and uh, the toes really need a good warm-up for this as well uh, it's really interesting when you warm up your fingers exclusively and you're getting really really strong on your fingers already but haven't not have not even warmed up a little bit your toes if you hit the wall in that state you're slipping off all the time yeah uh, which makes a lot of sense because Climbing barefoot like this really requires very active toes and if I don't have them I'm slipping off all the time. Also this incorporates the core obviously if we're doing whole body moves on an overhang like this. And yeah, first easier problems going down 7A, 7, 7A plus, you know, uh, in that area. And I think I did three for this, um, for this home wall session and then I felt, okay, you know what, it's time to progress to the real stuff. Yeah. Uh, the whole warm-up process, how long does it take, man? Uh, usually somewhere between 20, 25 minutes or something, maybe 30 minutes if I've, I'm having a little bit of more sluggish day. Uh, the thing is, it, it's always a bit different. It's not really, I'm not following a blueprint or anything like that. And I want to say that right away as a disclaimer. Um, I'm just trying to share the authentic training experience here as much as possible. So there's no going to be no background music or anything of that stuff, you know. Usually I'm having the radio in the back running uh, in my room here, in my little room. And uh, that gives a really cool atmosphere actually for training, I feel. So the next point, number three, yeah, which is what we, where we're at right now. I didn't really comment on that so far. But this is actually inventing or attacking uh, some easier projects. And with easier projects, I mean something in the range of 7B+, 7C, 7C+, or something. Usually stuff that goes down in one session. Yeah. I did. I get into. I got into this session here without any problems, uh, without any uh, projects, I should say. Of course, we always have problems, right? Uh, but uh, I didn't have any, any projects for that matter. So I had to invent something new. And for the first part of this session, I had to invent something between 7B+, 7C, something along these lines. And this is this boulder. I also wanted to incorporate the underclings that I got sent recently, uh, which I mounted just recently. So I, you know, I hadn't really developed these underclings. So my goal for this session was to invent at least one uh, project, which is easier on the on these other underclings, underclin which you have seen right now. Uh, I could send it. Pretty cool problem, actually. 
um, I'm gonna talk about it definitely in a future um, you know home wall episode where I collect my stuff for my digital guidebook as usual and then I had to invent something hard yeah which is point number four usually in my sessions since I am now really approaching peak finger strength performance and this happens around after so like 45 minutes interesting side note here maybe I feel that the, the more you get closer to your genetic limit or the more you're trained out so to speak the longer it does take you until you reach really that finger strength maximum where you can really go to your limit yeah so for me it takes at least I think 45 minutes or something you know counting from the time when I start the first when I hit the first hand holds so when I'm warming up on my hangboard from this time point on 45 minutes and then only I have reached my finger strength peak yeah and this is the phase of the session that I use to invent or attack my hardest projects so also as I said for this session I didn't have any projects I went without projects into this session so I had to invent something new and I wanted to do it with these underclings and this is how the process goes as you can see here I'm just simply sitting on the ground trying to feel out what's possible with these underclings here really trying to feel out which uh, footholds I'm gonna necessary to hold them yeah it's a, it's a really funny thing with these underclings when you get to them from the bottom where very often you can actually take them as a gaston right and uh i really love these um these gaston moves which you can as soon as you put your center of gravity up you can turn them around into an underkling and then you make some sort of crazy you know some sort of crazy catch to the to some signature sloper or something like that yeah and this was my goal for this session now here i am actually having a little bit of a breakthrough because I figured out I can actually hold the turnaround of this undercling, of the left undercling, yeah, which is really bad. I am hope, I think I'm showing you a close-up later on on how big this hole really is. It's really, really bad. And here I'm going to this edge with the right and then to the edge of the wall. Um, but in the end, I figured out that's a little bit too easy for the rest of the problem because the start would be very hard. And then once you got to this edge, it would, it would basically be over, right? So I figured I had to find something harder for the end which I did in in the end I went for the signature sloper uh, for the you know for the claw pinch like sloper uh, with my right hand which made the problem really significantly harder one more time also in the end yeah. so here as you can see I'm trying to figure out the best sequence for feet here as well um, to be able to turn this stuff around here for the first time uh, I'm able to do attempts from the bottom beautiful guest on lock off here into this undercling really bad stuff and then catching this undercling here on the side as a guest on as well actually it really was something that I did not expect that it would have to go down like this yeah turning the undercling around just really bad stuff it's basically a small undercling edge getting the right foot up boom slapping onto the claw <laughs> sloper and then I'm making a mistake here I'm forgetting that with my left hand I actually have to reach further obviously to the other undercling that makes the problem also really cool I think it's around 8a uh, and we're gonna talk about grading just in a second so again here sorting this undercling in takes a lot of time really puts pressure onto your right hand as well uh, catching the right uh, Gaston here, left foot up to create some, you know, counter force to this Gaston. Turning the left hand around, right foot up, boom, slapping onto the sloper. This move is harder than it looks, man. Uh, catching slopers like this, uh, where you have to sort your fingers in this accurately, is actually pretty hard. And here I could not find a better solution for the end match than to just simply campus it, <laughs> which is also something interesting. But obviously with underclings like this, it's very often very hard to step them afterwards, you know, once you're above them. So I talked about this recently, what I'm using usually for grading as a grading reference is this 8A bowler of mine because I think this 8A really hit this, hits the 8A grade, the V11 grade really ac accurately. Yeah? So always I'm, when I'm doing a harder project, uh, here you can see I'm actually chalking up my toes because you have to step such a small foothold uh, once you're beyond the second hole, right? So yeah, once I chalked it up, um, sending the problem was really not a big issue although it didn't feel super easy that day so i figured okay uh grading wise we're in the same range here than the problem than the project that i tried before right and this phase you know trying the harder projects that can take really from one hour up to three hours man depending on how fit i am depending on how much uh, 
gas I have in the tank, so to speak. Yeah, this is really uh, you know fluctuates a lot like that. So this is why I don't have a blue blueprint for a session. When it's over, when I make, when I have the impression that my finger strength goes down again, I'm switching back to easier projects until the session is over. Yeah, I would say in, usually it's about two hours, three hours in total. Yeah, so I hope hope this uh, is informative somehow. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like, drop a comment if you did. Share your experience as well. It would be very interesting to read. And uh, have a great one, guys. Uh, see you soon in the next one.